Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. We have a great show for you today. There is so much news round up. Before we begin, we want to say thank you to our subscribers and our viewers on social media. Without you, we will have no show. When we started this show, we did not have any viewers, we did not have any subscribers. Thanks to your patronage, a lot more people are watching our show and they are following us on social media. We say thank you very much, especially on YouTube. Our numbers have really increased dramatically and we're already close to 5,000 friends on Facebook. We've set our new sites on Mount Everest, which is YouTube. And we're asking for your help to reach a very big number on YouTube. Every time you watch our videos, we're asking you to go to YouTube and share these videos with your friends. Discuss the content of these videos. The purpose of these videos is to make you think about the African condition, which is what we're really doing. And we're doing more things which will make it easier for you to promote us on social media, okay? We are trying to build our own Amazon web servers. The work is already on. In fact, we will be inaugurating the work we've done on our Amazon servers and web development on July 4th, which is the date we celebrate US independence. We chose this date because this is gonna be a new declaration of independence for our company. We've set our sides that we wanna really help our people to become free economically, politically, and socially. We can only be free if we have what we call self-reliance. We cannot be free when we are dependent on other people. And that's really the problem Africa faces today. Much of Africa is not free because it depends on foreign powers, okay? When you depend on other people, you, you cannot really determine your own destiny. So that's the crux of the matter. So we are telling you now that we want to preach independence. We want to follow the same thing we preach. We don't like to be hypocrites. We don't want people who preach independence, but they themselves are dependents. No, we're preaching independence and we want to apply the same principles to our business and our lives. So today, we're going to focus more on May 13th. May 13th is a very important date for my country, Cameroon. As you guys know, I come from Cameroon originally. And what happens in this part of the world affects me personally. And I like to share with the world and I ask for your help. This country has been having a whole lot of problems because we've had a sit tight dictator called Mr. Paul Bia. He has been in power actually since 1962. He entered uh, the presidential palace. He has never left. Mm -hmm. For so many years, he doesn't want to leave. And anybody who tries to compete for election, he tries to silence or kill them. After lawyers started protesting, he sent his soldiers to kill these lawyers. And the problem got out of hand. Today, May 13th, the Cameroon problem has become inter internationalized. Everybody knows that there is a problem in Cameroon. We've been telling you this many, many years ago, many, many months ago, many, many days ago, but most of the Cameroonian politicians were spinning negative stories, telling you that, oh, those are all lies by protesters who want to soil the image of the country. But with the date of today, May 13th, you're going to see that there is a whole lot going on in Cameroon. The UN is receiving reports from Human Rights Watch. People are really seeing that the, the government in Cameroon is killing a lot of people in cold blood. Even the day the Prime Minister went to the Northwest province for a peacekeeping uh, mission, the peacekeeping mission was a fiasco because even on that day, a few meters away from where the Prime Minister was, soldiers were killing people. What kind of peace is that? As Fela used to say, now why your peace be that? <laughs> okay? If you are making peace with people, you cannot be killing them at the same time. So the Prime Minister has his roadshow, which already has been doomed to failure because he doesn't really have sincere intent. If you want to make peace, you have to have sincere intent. So when we see this problem in Cameroon going to the UN, it's a good move. And we think 
More people are going to sit and watch what is happening. So as of today, we think everybody now knows there's a problem in Cameroon that needs to be solved. And this problem basically involves two parties. You have the Anglophones and the Francophones government of Mr. Paul Beer. From what we see, everybody is saying there should be inclusive and meaningful dialogue. That's what all the actors at the UN are telling the Cameroon government and the Ambazonia people to do. They want them to make peace. They want to be a ceasefire. But how can this happen? Because already the PR government does not even want peace. They are reluctant peacemakers. They have made things so difficult. Anytime that you have a negotiation or a peaceful negotiation, you always have the center you have the left side and you have the right side. I would say Mr. Bia is on the left side. He stands on a position of no concessions. Then on the right side, you have the Amazonians who want total independence. But Mr. Bia wants to maintain the status quo. He wants Cameroon to remain the way it was since or before 2016, before this crisis started. So he wants to bring Cameroonians back to that point. By contrast, the Ambazonians have already moved ahead. They really want to, to have total independence. They want their own country. After frustration with the recalcitrance of Mr. Paul Bia, they decided that, well, if the Francophones don't want us in their country, we better just have our own country and live our own lives. Okay? So whenever you have a negotiation, when you have the center. The center is really where you have compromise. Compromise is basically a situation where we give and take. That's what peaceful negotiations should be. When you make negotiations, you don't negotiate with your friends. You negotiate with your enemies. So Mr. Bia does not understand this. By calling these people terrorists, it doesn't change anything. He will be forced, just like in the case of South Africa, he will be forced to negotiate with these same people he's calling terrorists. He doesn't want to do that. He will be forced to negotiate the form of the state. Who told him to say that the form of the state is non-negotiable? That is Baluni. He has to wake up and smell the coffee. The form of the state is negotiable. One individual cannot tell Cameroonians what form the state should take. He's just one person. The masses should decide the way they want their country to be organized. So by claiming too much power, he arrogates to himself illusions that should not really be. And that's really why it's difficult to bring about peace in Cameroon. I mean, genuine peace in Cameroon. Hey, yo, Shape, I thought you was going to take me to this place so I could get my taxes done. You know I'm trying to buy a new house. What's up? Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Joan, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the states, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, fat refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing, the Prince. Now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. One, one, I mean genuine peace in Cameroon. What we're seeing is exactly what the Cameroonian UN ambassador, uh, Monte, is, is doing. He's just... Uh, talking about the need for money by his government. This government created this problem. You cannot create a problem and you refuse to be accountable to that problem. The Cameroonian government is accountable to what is happening. So the international community should not even be giving this government money to deal with this crisis because this is a man-made problem. Cameroonians were living in peace because they were exercising their civil liberties of peaceful marches. The government sent soldiers to beat and kill them. So they created this problem. Today, as we speak, over 15,000 Anglophones have been killed. And it is really sad when I'm talking to you. Over 15,000 Anglophones 
have been killed within this three year period. So is this a good thing? It is not a good thing. Yet, the bloodshed is not enough for Mr. Paul Bia and his gang. These people feel they have to kill more people. So we're just telling you, there's not going to be any peace if the international community allows Mr. Paul Bia to initiate his sham peace plan. Mr. Paul Bia's sham peace plan is what? Everything will stay the same. Nothing will really change. We will maintain the status quo. If their political leaders try to sell out, they will really have a tough time because the guys with the guns on the, on the ground will not allow the political leaders to sell out. So already, this is going to be tough for the international community. And we're saying this because we know this environment very well. We're giving advice to the international community. We want them to behave well. Do not allow Mr. Bia to run the peace plan. If he runs the peace plan, he will execute his own personal peace plan, which is status quo. We want international organizations, okay, such as the UN, to take over this crisis. The African Union is very, very weak and feeble. We don't really trust the African Union. They will not be able to do a good job. So far, they were able to talk to Mr. Bia to change his ways. But did Mr. Bia change his ways? Of course not. Because they don't have a way to exercise any power. They are weak. So what we really need is more like an African parliament. And which is why we're saying we want Africa to tear down all its borders so that Africa can function like one nation. Then all those countries would become members of one parliament. So once the African parliament votes for a motion and it becomes law, we have to exercise the law. We have to apply the law. If a dictator does something wrong to his people, we have to make him accountable. We don't just let him do things because he feels he's in power. So right now, most of the people who make up the AU, the African Union, they are not only really beholden to the people. They do what they like, and we cannot trust the AU to solve the Cameroonian crisis, which has morphed into full-time war, total war. We think the UN, if it's serious, can really do a good job, especially with the responsibility of the United States. If the US is responsible, they can really help to really solve this problem in Cameroon. And that's the only way. Because when we look at the UN, they are not really credible. But with America's backing, they may be able to do something that can really bring order into Cameroon. So this is what we're thinking. Do not accept the sham peace plan offered by Mr. Paul Bia. Let's use a different plan. We salute Mr. Donald Trump a whole lot for the work he has done to bring a shed light on this issue, the Cameroonian crisis, which has become total war. So now the whole world understands what is happening in this environment. And we are encouraging the international community to continue putting ex exactly more pressure on Mr. Paul Bia. We do not want this international community to allow Mr. Paul Bia to present his sham peace plan. The sham peace plan is just a recipe for more disaster. Okay? The people want genuine dialogue. So by sending his prime minister to parade on a roadshow <laughs> like a masquerade, it's not going to work. That's not peace. You don't make peace that way. So on this show, for the first time, we're going to enunciate a peace plan. This is how peace can work in that environment. We're going to give you a few points which we can use to bring peace in Cameroon. Point number one, Mr. Bia must be forced to go on national television and apologize to the Cameroonian people for killing their children, their fathers, their mothers, and this apology must be genuine. In addition to the television appearance, Mr. Bia must visit the Northwest and Southwest prisons and ask the people for forgiveness. That's how you do it. You don't sit in a palace and send your slaves to go and talk on your behalf. That's the old way. So the first point, if Mr. Bia wants to make peace in this region, is to go on national television and apologize to the people for killing their relatives father, mother, sister, because there are so many mass graves when you go to this part of the world. People may not know this, but our people are on the ground, 
They know where all these mass graves are. People are asked to dig graves. Immediately they finish digging the graves, they kill them and dump them in those graves. That's really sad. We want you to know all of this stuff. So that's the first point. Mr. Bihar needs to make a public apology. Life insurance money secrets of millionaires and billionaires exposed. Discover how America's rich and famous exploit these arcane tools to build fabulous wealth. Why should these big white guys have all the fun? Let Prince Ojong, the celebrity author of The Miraculous Millionaire, show you the little understood life insurance way to riches. Are you still doubting the good things that life insurance can do for you? Trust strategies, estate planning, 401k rollover, annuity contract, cash value, education funding, executive benefits, income protection, life protection, living benefits, mortgage protection, tax-free retirement? Think and grow rich with life insurance. Your amazing journey to wealth begins by calling Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. Second, demilitarization. The Northwest and Southwest provinces are very militarized. They have been militarized since 2016. This has to stop. When you're talking peace to somebody, you come with a peace plant, an olive branch. You don't bring a gun. As the Prime Minister was pre presenting peace to people in Bamenda, soldiers were killing people a few meters away. What kind of peace is that? As I said before, now why your peace be that, according to Fela, you cannot make peace that way. Who are you fooling? We live in the 21st century. These people are taking us for jokers. No, we're intelligent people. The people are intelligent. Who are you fooling? You cannot be fooling them this way. You're fooling yourself. And which is why the problem would keep festering and get worse and worse. Because this government thinks they can continue to deceive people. Even when I saw the action of the ambassador on the floor on Monday, Monte, he was trying to defend his government. But you're defending a government that should not be defended. This government is an outlaw. This is not really, a, you cannot call it a government. This is a club. This is a gang of thieves who have hijacked the state and they've taken all the money from the state and they're using it for their own betterment. Anybody who works with this government should really be ashamed of themselves because they are really working for the devil. And we say this with impunity because this is not a good government. So those are the first two points. Then the next point, freedom for all political prisoners. The third point in order to, for us to have peaceful dialogue in Cameroon is freedom for all political prisoners. So many people are in jail who should not be in jail, okay? By contrast, you have people who have stolen money. They only went to jail because Mr. Biya started feeling they were a threat. So we want all these people to be released immediately, unconditionally. Without that, any type of peace that you talk about in Cameroon is not going to work. So these are some of the elements we're putting forward in order for us to have a peaceful resolution of this crisis in Cameroon. All the political prisoners should be released forthwith. They should be released immediately. Sisiku Ayoktabe, Mr. Maurice Kamto, and all their followers should be released right away. If this is done, then the international community now can sit with Mr. Bia to draw up a peace process. Okay? Without that, nothing can really happen. Because if peace is to happen, it needs to be in good faith. Of course, whenever you negotiate, it's a give and take. You cannot negotiate by imposing your will on the other party then that's not really negotiation in good faith. And what we see now is the BR government is not going to negotiate in good faith. So if the international community has any illusions about this government making peace with Anglophones, then I will say they are smoking marijuana or something. I don't know. Because he's not going to make any peace because he stands where he stands with the status quo. He doesn't want to move an inch. But these people are not going to accept decentralization. They're not going to accept refederation because they have been a federation before. So they have just been disappointed with what's happening, and now they don't even want federation. And what Mr. Bia has in mind is cosmetic 
decentralization or just federation. No, people want that. People don't want that anymore. They really want total independence. So the way things are going to evolve, as we see it, if the international community makes the mistake of allowing Mr. Bia to make peace on his own, then he's just going to present the sham peace plan. So we've pr presented what we think can really solve the problem in this part of the world. We thank you for watching this show, and we're asking you to support our businesses, also to support our show. So far, we're asking you to go to YouTube, share videos that we have on YouTube. We have over 55 videos so far. We're asking you to share these videos with your friends. If you can do that, it's going to be good for all of us. And we have resources that we're bringing to you, as we say. On July 4th, we're going to announce our new business plan. And we're going to open up our business for a lot of people to participate in it. Because we see you as African missionaries, especially people who are watching our show. We want you to use the information from this show to empower yourself. We can tell you that God has given you unlimited power. So we want you to take advantage of this power to do things for yourself. Don't sit and feel like you are a victim of circumstance. We want you to feel like you are the son or the daughter of God. God has given you what it takes to succeed. So that's really the goal of our AWS program. We want to have the infrastructure which makes it easy. If you have a business, we'll make it easy for you to promote your business and acquire clients. Then those who just want to start new businesses, we'll be able to help them by writing up business plans and we can write very winning business plans because we understand the American business environment very well. So if you work with us, you're always going to have a successful business. So we can be your consultant and make sure that you come up with a business that will do very, very well. And you make a whole lot of money. That's really the purpose of business. In fact, as Max Weber defines capitalism, it's a system of private enterprise which uses the factors of production to create an unlimited amount of profit. And that's our mentality. We want you to share this Max Weber concept. That's the way we look at capitalism. So that's really what this show is about. Unlike other shows, we don't just want to share the news with you. A lot of news is breaking out, but we look at it, then we try to strategize how this news can benefit you. So we don't just want to feed you with news, which is useless. No, we want you to look at the news, then make sense of, of this news that is happening. That's the purpose of this show. And we want to empower you with tools which you can use to live a better life. So our show is really something that hits home. So if you have any questions, you can always communicate with us. We are very, very approachable. You can reach us on social media. You can even reach us on the phone. We share our phone number on every show. So feel free to call. We will respond. Okay? We are very, very approachable. So we're telling you, don't sit and complain that I'm not having any help. We are here to help you, and you are not just watching us in vain. We want to help you improve your life. If you are happy with your life, we can make it even better. Subscribe to our show on YouTube. Invite your friends to watch our videos. This is going to be very, very good for you and for us. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.